Welcome back. It's smoking and Toastin'. It's show number 169. We'll talk about how we will drink in 2020 and going forward. But first, and before we taste our uh, our Jessup Farm uh, sour ale in, I got a little uh, got a little Mythbusters segment. You ever watch the show Mythbusters? I love Mythbusters. Yes. Yeah? All right. So, well, I got one for you. You know what your uh, friends may have told you? You may have even believed this yourself. I, I believed it, but apparently it's not true. What's that? That uh, let's say you've got a can of beer. Okay, and, I've got a can of beer, and it got shaken up a little bit. You know, maybe you dropped it on the counter or something. You you're worried that when you pop the top, that it's going to you know explode, mm-hmm. go everywhere. Uh, so what do you do? Um, set it aside and get a different can of beer, or you do this. Oh, I've seen people tap the top of yep, beer. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know, like. So I've never done that because logically that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Well, that's why we're myth. Like, bu- that's if why it's we're agitated, busting. agitate it some more. <laughs> well, that's why we're myth busting. Uh, it's a commonly held belief that tapping a beer can won't. Uh, it's commonly held belief that tapping a beer can will prevent it from exploding. But according to the results of you're going to love this, a study published by MIT. Nice. MIT, <laughs> going, to, going to where it matters. Uh, researchers at the University of Southern Denmark meticulously experimented with shaken and unshaken beer cans before coming to their conclusion. The theory behind the tapping is that when the beer can's shaken, it causes bubbles to form in the liquid, and then when the can is open, those bubbles rush to the top and causes the liquid to fizz out of the can. Tapping the can, in theory causes the bubbles to release from the side of the can and rise to the top prior to being opened so they don't come all rushing up when you pull the uh, the top on the on the beer can. Unfortunately, the research shows that the tapping doesn't cause the bubbles to rise at all. Uh, they had two sets of cans. One, <laughs> I would love to have been there for this study, right. one that had been vigorously shaken and one that wasn't. The cans were weighed before being opened and afterwards. Some of the cans were tapped and some weren't. Regardless, the tapping showed no impact on the amount of liquid that was lost when the can was open. So, Well, you would think uh, if you're one of these people that taps on the top of beer and it still spews out. Mm-hmm. That after you do that a number of times, you would go, hmm, maybe that doesn't work. What I love is how scientifically they approach this. He, they have several theories as to why the tapping doesn't work. One possibility, they say, is the tapping doesn't release enough energy to move the bubbles. Another is that the bubbles don't rest on the side of the can, but instead sit in the bulk of the liquid. They also theorize that certain proteins in the beer may prevent the bubbles from rising. No matter uh, the reason, the truth is clear. If a beer can is shaken, point it away from your face when you are opening it. Unless you just want to, you know, try to drink I it. Point it right at someone out, else's face. Right out of the fountain, you know. Uh, but, yeah. So there you go. A little myth busting uh, on Smoking and Toasting, episode number 169. I opened up a, a second video window, but apparently it also has second audio on it it was confusing. oh so it was uh, everything yeah. i'm still playing around with this this um this is your welcome to a the, meeting uh, thing or, no, or? <laughs> this is the uh the uh, watch party thing oh, the have, watch party yeah i have no idea how it works so i'm just i'm just no. pressing buttons guys so if it gets weird you know <laughs> oops didn't mean <laughs> thanks to send, for letting me know where i didn't oops, know that, didn't uh, mean to send that picture <laughs> right <laughs> again yeah again yes <laughs> all right uh ian i think it's time to uh crack open this uh this bomber bottle you know often bomber bottles are uh, this is like a full 750 milliliter bottle, like a yes. wine bottle. Uh, often bomber bottles are a little bit smaller than this, but this is uh, this is for real. This is a uh, this is a real farmhouse ale. And uh, Jessup, um, these guys are known for their farmhouse ales. That's a big part. Oh my of, gosh, it big smells part so of what good. they're also, uh, uh, all about. Jessup Farm Barrel House Maslenta is what this is called. It is a tequila barrel aged golden. Sour ale, and what what did you get when you popped the top? I oh man, it smell smells it yet, so classic, like sour farmhouse. Uh, I'm passing these over there to Adam, who's behind on the beer here. So, like, I love that oh, sour boy. barrel. This has got that, yeah. This has got thing. that sour plus saison sort of uh, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit of funk. Well, a little bit of funk, yeah, yeah. And you're you're a fan of the funk. I'm a fan of the funk. I don't uh, fake the funk. <laughs> we want the funk. I'm not faking the funk. Yes, yeah, yeah. We want the funk. Um, well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to let you taste it first. I love it. I love it on the nose. 
It, it's so Low fruity mm -hmm. and it's very, very fruity. a little sour and, and a little, little bit delicious. dank. Just right, yeah. yeah, just right off the nose. I haven't even tried it yet. It's mm -hmm. got all those things going on. Like my mouth is watering. Wow, there's so much going on here. So much going on. It's definitely got that fruity. It's definitely got the farmhouse ale vibe to it. You can get a little bit of the tequila barrel taste, and it's a sour. It's all these things going on at and one it time. it finishes with like just a touch of like peach right by the pit. Yes, like which I wouldn't have expected. Right by the pit, that kind of bitter peach kind of thing. Let's see what the bottle says. Mm, 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 mm. If you guys are out there watching me for the first time, this is something that I do for a living, just FYI. <laughs> not the worst job I've had. I'll tell you, <laughs> my immediate response to this is that this is one of those bottles, and it's perfect when you look at it. This is one of those bottles you want to open up when you've got friends, you know, a friend or two mm -hmm. over, and you want to pour it and share it and talk about it. It's it's beer in conversation. It's not just like, uh, hey, I'm thirsty. Let me grab something out of the fridge. It says, uh, we ever so patiently aged this golden sour ale in Añejo tequila barrels for 12 months before gently spicing it with a blend of fresh citrus peels. Uh, bright citrus aromatics mm -hmm. uh, complement earthy notes of agave and oak in this complex beer. Slow down, take a breath, and take a sip while you live in the moment with a glass of Masalenta. I wonder how they even... Like came about with the idea for this. You can definitely get the citrus peel in, and we, as, as you said that, I was taking a drink, and it, it was mm -hmm. totally, totally in that upfront, almost citrus zest sort of yeah, a the vibe zest kind it. of yeah. thing. Uh, wow, I, this is one of the most complex beers I think we've had in a while. It's Today's just, show is all about complexity. It is complexity, complexity, and, and, and random tangents, and how we'll drink in twenty twenty. <laughs> uh, I think um, one of the things that we've certainly part of our journey in terms of of drink has been more about and this has been really i've been on this path since college uh, the older i get the more it's about quality over quantity oh yeah you know yeah. back in the day it was just like uh you know what what can you get in a 24 pack i, I got 20 bucks what can i get for right. it? <laughs> exactly and but these days it's about like the experience you know and that's that really is this really is an experience beer mm -hmm. you know this is something you want to uh, it would almost be a shame to open this alone at home. Well, you'd you be know? committed. However, this is six point three percent, so it's not you know brutal or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, but you definitely have to be committed to it. I, you know, I a bomber like this, especially something so uh, so big and and crazy different tasting. You love to share with friends because then you could talk about it. it gives you a conversation piece, right? Right. Uh, that you get to enjoy. I really enjoy that. Yeah, it's good. It's tasters are great. Speaking of tasters, I brought some fun tasters over to uh, Mr. Uh, Alan Denny's house the other day. Uh, I, you know, I had to. I wound up having to miss that. How did that go? You missed an incredibly good steak. I was I was invited, and I had just gotten some uh, dental work done, and I wasn't feeling up to it. Yeah, I, def you don't I definitely really want to chew on steak. Definitely when couldn't you... have chewed the steak, <laughs> yeah. but I was I was. I still, mean, you could cut it with a fork. I it was, was still, pretty amazing. I was still not go <laughs> not doing too good. Although I will say, uh, the pain medication they give you uh, that uh, you know it's it's not bad, and if you uh, combine that with a couple of. Uh, um, parish Brewing um, um, Tropics, the, yeah. the one that we had last week. Just be glad you're staying home. That's, just That's right, all I have to right. say. Just be glad well, you're staying home. Anytime you need to lose a tooth or something like that, yeah. you pay yeah. me half what you'd pay the dentist, and I'll take care of it for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm brandishing my fist for okay. those of you yeah, that are not, got not you. Yep. watching. Yep. I got you. <laughs> uh, and in some cases, it might be less painful. Well, you know? maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Newsweek ran an article um, not too long ago. About nine craft breweries worth traveling for. I thought I would share this worth with you. Worth traveling yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is a different approach. It's, it's like, like a destination craft Right, like a destination brewery. craft brewery. Right. Not just like they have great beer, mm -hmm. but they're worth the trip if you're headed there from uh, somewhere else. And I think only two of these are in the U.S. The first one is... Uh, it's Russian River Brewing Company oh, in yeah. California. They are located right in the heart of California wine country. Uh, they say it's a destination all its own. Every year in February, they release Pliny the Younger for two weeks, mm -hmm. and then the uh, um, the lines people camp out on the street 
actually to get a glass of Pliny the Younger. I and bet course, that's a good party. The elder you know, I'm not younger. usually one that's going to camp out like that, but I bet I'm that's a good either. party that I'm night. I'm not either. I'm not either. Uh, another one they mentioned from the U.S. is Coney Island Brewing Company. Uh, these beers, say, they say, pay homage to the history and playfulness of America's playground, Coney Island. Uh, beer lovers can try the year-round classics like Mermaid Pilsner or their summer favorite Cotton Candy Kolsch. All steps from the boardwalk and the famous Cyclone roller coaster. Nice. So that's pretty cool. So if you're headed to Coney Island, know that Coney Island might as well go right there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, The next one is in Chile. It's in Talagante, Chile. It's the Sot Brewery. S Z. O.T. A Californian and Chilean husband and wife team established this brewery. It's 30 minutes outside Santiago. Uh, they opened in 2006. They serve freshly made Italian pizza and have 14 draft lines with beers inspired by wine, California-style beer, and even uh, milkshakes. Um, Riot Beer in Cape Town, South Africa. Interesting. Riot Beer Riot in Cape beer. Town. All right. Yeah, yeah. They... Uh, they uh, say that the craft brew scene in Cape Town is well established, and the brewery is all about making noise from classic IPAs and lagers to alcoholic peach iced tea. You don't have to look far to find something unique. So, uh, Beavertown Brewery in uh, London, in the UK. I've seen Beavertown cans. I don't know if I've ever had uh, a Beavertown. Uh, they've long had a loving relationship with beer, talking about the British. But Beavertown's putting a new spin, they say, on the classics. Um, they say it's a brewery for the adventurous and fun at heart. Now this gets interesting. All right. Tel Aviv, Israel. Tel Aviv. The Dancing Camel Brewery. That's an amazing I'm name. I'm not making this up. Isn't that an amazing <laughs> name? Uh, it's located in a converted grain storage facility dating back to the 1930s. It's Israel's oldest microbrewery. Uh, the beer features locally sourced ingredients and traditional recipes, such as Old Papa, which uses date honey and is based on a recipe dating back to 4th century Babylonian times. Wow. Dude, road trip. Wouldn't it be great to do the show from there? (laughs) (laughs) How fun would that be? We're in lovely downtown Tel Aviv. And if you make your way to Hanoi, Vietnam, Turtle Lake Brewing Company is a place you should absolutely travel to. It's a brew pub which features a combination of their own beers, the Mango Smoothie IPA, the Big Boy Imperial Stout, and other local craft brews that aren't there. So they do their own and then they bring in and, other. Yeah. I've seen, I think it's cool. super cool yeah. when you have a brewery that actually mm-hmm. sells other breweries' beers as well. You also have a choice of vistas while you drink your beer. You can take in the beautiful lakeside locale mm-hmm. or you can uh, watch through tempered glass walls as they make the beer. Nice. I don't know which I would choose. That's a, that's a, that's a tough one. I have to do, I have to split them. Yeah, I wonder if the writers for this have been to all of these. Uh, uh, well, if so, that's that's an even better job than ours. Yeah, I mean, you know? <laughs> like, uh, I have this this uh, article I'm working on, mm-hmm. so I need you to sign off on a few financials here, please. A few travel expenses. <clears throat> the Young Master Brewery in Hong Kong in China. Um, it's one of the first craft breweries in Hong Kong. Young Master Ales have been a hot spot since 2013. They do classic pale ales and offer more unusual ones inspired by traditional Hong Kong flavors like... Uh, uh, the Cha Chan Tang Goza, brewed with local salted lime. Visitors can take brewery tours in either Cantonese or English. So there you go. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> now, here's one I would love to visit Young Henry's in Sydney, Australia. Oh, yeah. Because the Australians can drink them some beer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it didn't foster, trust me. <laughs> uh, in the heart of the city in Sydney, they say the brewery is all about. Uh, sorry, my page flashed on me. Uh, it's all about community, including reducing the environmental impact, not one to box themselves in. Young Henry's recently added a distillery, so you can enjoy a glass of moonshine with your beer. So, nice. A so glass of moonshine. Yeah. <laughs> so When's the last time you sat down with just a glass yeah. of moonshine? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you want? You know, I'll take a beer and some moonshine. Yeah. yeah. Moonshine uh, with a beer back. Nine breweries worth traveling to. I thought that was a very interesting. And Newsweek, and not, not a place you often find, right, right. You don't find articles beer. about craft beer. So. Beer and music right. a lot. Uh, we will be finding some craft beer here, but in our next segment, we are going to take a break and uh, sample some Cantera Negra. Cantera Negra tequila. It's a uh, it's an agave, uh, 100% agave, Añejo tequila. And I'm really excited about this because uh, this is not something I had seen up until 
I kind of stumbled across this bottle. So uh, we will do this in the next segment, and we will be right back. It's show number 169. Also in the next segment, How We'll Drink in 2020. <laughs> 